G'day, welcome to another big edition of the MCFL Footy Show. Thanks to Bendigo Bank looking back on round four. My name's Andy, I'm joined by the great man Grant and uh, we've paid the big bucks for you this week, mate. We've uh, we've got you back. Uh, Mitch has been given the shaft, he's been he's been sent to bench duties and running the water and even then I think he'll be struggling. So we've got our main man back. Uh, nice, uh, nice fresh week we've got here over in Carisbrook. Yeah, nice fresh morning to be back. Um, no wonder I'm back really. I mean, <laughs> ratings have gone down since Mitch has been in charge so I've been a bit brought into it, bring them back up, even if I'm not wanted after a couple of clips over the last couple of weeks. But, yeah, I've been watching, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. Well, the other. stats reflect that uh, on, on average, compared to the first show you had, we had uh, 600 more views than uh, any other show Mitch has been involved with, so money talks, so we yeah. got you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, of talking, Talbot's doing a lot of talking uh, with their great performance uh, against Navarro on the weekend. Um, they had a, had a nice uh, nice big win. I think it was their first win over Navarro ever. I've, uh, I've been involved, so yeah. I've been yeah. informed. Yeah, no, first win over Navarre, and um, probably a, a game that gave us a good indication of where about Navarre sits. Um, after their win over Denali the week before, you probably put them in that 7th and 10th sort of bracket. Um, not quite up there with maybe the top six teams yet. They always come good later in the season. But um, Tolbert, big win. No Matt Smith in the team, I believe. Um, Zach Peoples in the goals. So, yeah, they're doing good things out of Tolbert. They'll be happy with that one. Yeah, exactly. He kicked a, kicked a nice bag on the weekend and uh, and doing a fantastic job there. Do, do you sort of think that Tolbert are a, a bit of the real deal at this stage of the year, or they've still got a little bit more room for improvement before we, uh, we start seeing exactly where they're at? At this stage, I'd put Tolbert in the top four. Yeah. Um, they're only, you know, Everybody's talked about that Natty game. They only kick out of that one, so I'd put them up there, right up with the top teams at the moment. Now, speaking of uh, of Natty Bialba, they had a really, really big win over Avoca on the weekend. We know Avoca is uh, they've they shown some glimpses of brilliance, but their last two weeks they've been brought back down to earth with a thud and. Almost like we're sort of seeing some of the, the form that they showed last year, or, or, or Natty be able to that good? I, well, I think you could put a line through Avoca's loss to Carisbrook. I mean, Carisbrook seemed to be a step above, and they had a lot of outs for Avoca that week. Um, Avoca had ins, Natty had outs, so I thought this game would be a lot closer, and I think um, I think Natty did as well. So, you know, the, the triple figure margin was a bit of a shock. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure where that puts Avoca at, the, at this stage. They had a pretty strong team in, so. And Natty didn't have their strongest, so it might have been Natty just playing well on their day, but yeah, Avoca might want to just sort of get a bit hungry and maybe correct things up early in the season rather than leave it a bit later, I think. Yeah, exactly. That round two game uh, was certainly the benchmark of that when they are at their best, uh, they are very, very hard to, uh, to beat. Uh, Newstead had a, had a big win over Campbell's Creek, uh, 51 scoring shots to two. Uh, Newstead... Just uh, in a bit of inaccuracy. I mean, percentage might come to come back to haunt them at the as, as I think it did last year. Um, but certainly good performance by them. They got them up the six six position that percentage boost, so they'll be pretty pleased with that. Um, but yeah, it could have been even bigger. A bit of a concern for Campbell's great. Their scoring's got lower and lower each game. Started five goals round one. They're down to just one the last couple of weeks. So a few worries there. Um, but they've just got to keep trying hard and keep trying to score goals. Um, but really limit the what the other teams are doing to them. I mean, new set have been. New said we'll be really happy with that win though and as they should be, you know, there there's a fair few teams on the two wins now. Um so every percentage point counts at the moment, so Noosa will be happy with that one. Uh, and as we, we spoke about uh, before highlighting Carisbrook, uh, really, really big winners over Harcourt. And I think, as you mentioned before about uh, Natty Bielba and, uh, and Avoca, uh, the result of this game, the margin, I think surprised a few. Yep, uh, really shows what Carisbrook, I think, can be capable of doing this year. Not a one versus two, you know, both undefeated after three rounds wasn't really the result. Uh, Harcourt would have been hoping for. Carisbrook just don't let teams score, and then at the other end, they are just packing on goals. Um, Lee and Cunningham, what did he kick this week? He I kicked think, eight. Kicked eight this week. <laughs> I think he kicked nine last week. That's 17 in two weeks. I think he's six clear from Ash Minari, his teammate on the leaderboard. He's got 11 goals clear of the next bloke. He's on track for 100. He kicked over 80 goals um, a couple of years back, maybe about 2014, 16 sort of period. Um, but he's missed a bit of footy in between that time. So if he gets back and plays every game and Carriers will keep winning the way they are, you know, he could get 100 goals this season. So that would be exciting. It hasn't happened in the in MCFL for a while. And uh, and the forwards bring the uh, the crowds through as well. Absolutely. So uh, no doubt uh, they'll, they'll, supporters will follow him. Uh, Royal Park had a really big uh, win and returned to form against uh, the Rovers. Yeah, wouldn't have tipped this one going in probably, um, considering that, you know, Rovers had two wins on back to back and Royal Park had two losses but yeah good win for Royal Park uh, really held 
uh, Meribah Rovers down in the scoring sort of area so they'll be happy with that especially on the hedges over ground where scoring can either be really hard on the big space or really easy when you have that space but um, no they'll be happy with that and yeah they they went goalless for a quarter which they've done a couple of times this season and it cost them you know, in the last couple of losses but it didn't cost them on the weekend so yeah right direction for that one and the bragging rights for the Maribyrnong team once again for Royal Park. <laughs> Fantastic of it by them. Uh, Lexton defeating uh, Trentham quite comfortably in the end. I think that was another result that might have surprised a few. Yeah, Lexton's best game for the season, uh, without a doubt, I'd say. And uh, yeah, Trentham probably, I mean, not no alarm bells, their first loss of the season, but. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that one. Um, it puts them back sort of in the pack a bit. Um, there's only two undefeated teams now. They would have liked to be one of them. Um, but yeah, Lexton, definitely their best game of the season. And I reckon, you know, they might they might make a little play for the top four as well. There seems to be quite a lot of teams sort of pushing for the third and fourth position at the moment. Yeah, I remember you said at the uh, start of the year that Lexton's been one of those teams that probably underperformed. But if they if they can really launch their season on the back of this performance, that's, uh, that's a fantastic sign. And uh, speaking of another team that's uh, really started to push on Sunday afternoon football. Molden had a really, really big win over Denali. Yep, uh, yep, great win for Molden. A um, little bit of alarming for Denali again, another big loss, but they were much better in that first quarter. I think Molden only got three goals over them, and even up to quarter to, uh, half time, it was only about seven goals. I think it was nine goals kicked in the last quarter for mm-hmm. Molden, and That's that right. that flatters the scoreline, makes it look a bit worse than what it was. So, you know, but don't take anything away from Molden. A big win for those blokes. And, um, yeah, another team that's, I reckon, in finals calculations as well. And they got within five goals of Trentham the previous week as well. So, um, and we expect Trentham to contest for finals. So, given Molden's performance there, it's not a surprise. They they backed it up with a really good, solid effort. Haven't really been blown out of the water this season, Molden. And that's exactly what you want from a team that was down the ladder last year. You just want competitive efforts. And they're they're giving that every week at the moment. Fantastic. Well, thanks to our friends at uh, Bendigo Bank. Thanks so much for joining us uh, to look back on round four. Mate, we look forward to catching up with you later on a week. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Andy.